What's up, guys? Faruqi Bros here, back with another Built Different stream. Uh, and today for you guys, we're going to be talking all things DC Comics, uh, WB Discovery, and a little bit of Obi-Wan Kenobi as well. Before we start, as you see the little balloon with Samir's head, it was our little brother's birthday this week. So, uh, uh, Samir, happy birthday. Um, I like that balloon. Do you want to show it to the screen? Like, all right, all right. Wanna, uh, sure, wanna, yeah. let's, we're going to display it, you know, like... Forget it. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's a nice balloon. You know? Nice. And you know, Umar's a big fan of balloons, so we want to just throw it out there. Um, so okay. Is is that because he's such a hot head? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, he's, he's full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have this debate will be full of hot air, so we'll we'll start with him right there. Um so the first topic of the day, you know, first item today. Oh, right. Tuesday night's plastic corrosion awareness meeting was, I think, a big success. And we could thank Mr. Umer for putting it on for us. Thank you, Mr. Umer. I, I don't understand. Sometimes you see with these guys, I, I'm kind of out of the loop. Like, I don't understand what the hell they're quoting. Sometimes family guy. Sometimes. <laughs> this guy, yo, this guy. Like, Umer's, Umer's so, so sometimes fake. something something stupid that I would never watch. So okay. it's like, I don't, well, I don't understand. It was the very stupid movie Toy Story 1. Did, uh, I'm sure it's very high on your list of, of stupid movies, right, Umer? All right, just Toy Story 1. <laughs> All right, first topic of the day is uh, big changes over at DC uh, Films, uh, WB Discovery at large. Uh, Michael DeLuca, uh, because <coughs> I'm the DeLuca boy, uh, and Pam Abdi, uh, I hope I'm saying that right, yeah, will replace Toby Emmerich officially uh, at DC Films and will lead the film division. Uh Zaslav is also launching DC Films at its own vertical. So uh, when I was first putting this topic together, Umar made a good point that some of you guys might not even know what, what it means to have its own vertical. So I thought maybe take a second to explain it. Uh, the closest comparison would be to look at how Disney handles uh, Marvel, Star Wars, and Pixar. Um, it's three separate divisions, three separate teams. People don't normally cross over. Star Wars people aren't working with Marvel people and so forth. But all of them respond up to uh, um, Bob Chapik right now, who is the CEO of Disney. Um, and similar similar concepts, you can um, uh, take people like David Zaslav, and he's going to want to separate uh, WB Films into DC, uh, Harry Potter, Wizarding World, and then WB Animation, and of course, their flagship uh, regular films, such as Dune or Elvis, or things that they have going that's going to be gunning for awards. So by separating films into multiple categories, uh, they can potentially build a situation that's closer to DC. But it still means it is um, closer to Marvel, I'm sorry. Uh, but still, it um, is what, something... Is there a lot of music coming from my end? Yeah, the noise in the street. Yeah, there's a... <coughs> there's a parade happening outside um, as I'm coughing out an allergy. Um, allergy, as some call it. Uh, so... Yeah, now you made my point. Yeah, Toby Emmerich is out. Uh, so, uh, Umar, I should start with you because you love not looking at the screen. So, uh, what do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you think about uh, Toby Emmerich uh, kind of being out now uh, at DC? I mean, his name is obviously uh, linked to a couple of controversies, but also those who are fans of kind of the older DC films might have feel some type of way about it. So there was a quite a bit of celebration on social media when he departed. Now I want to my want to curb that by saying he's not completely gone from Warner Brothers. Rather, he's just not leading them anymore. He is getting his own production company to make more films, but he will not be leading them. So how do you feel about DC kind of shifting a big change at the top? Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think we were looking for a fresh start because of whatever's happened uh, in the past with Toby. Um, and to be honest, this uh, the whole, I guess, like the whole previous like group of people that were there, you know. So it's better to just move on. It's a it's a new beginning. Warner Warner Brothers Discovery took over, so it's it's a it's a new beginning, right? So it's better to just move on from these guys. Plus, he in his like in his uh, tenure or whatever, there's been a lot of, I guess, like the DC fans haven't exactly been happy. Um, and that's regardless of, of like whether you were unhappy about the, the Snyder stuff or whatever. Like you just kind of the current run hasn't been great, so um, it's it'll be good to see uh, who the new people are and what they choose to do um, in terms of what's what's fresh. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. I think it's a it's a good beginning. I think uh, we all saw this coming when Discovery bought uh, Warner Brothers from 
AT&T, they were going to make changes. So a lot of the people were, okay, look at Umar's profile picture. <laughs> Did he do this on purpose? <laughs> he turned to Obi-Wan, bro, or Ben. Uh, uh, well, this is how Umar feels sometimes to us. Like, he's, he, he's a boo, you know? So he's a boomer. Um, but as Samir starts laughing um, on that. Uh, and also, once upon a time, a few years ago, maybe it was 2015, 2016, maybe in 2017, uh, I was, like, talking with Toby, and Samir said in the chat, like, who the hell is Toby, you know? And I was like... Uh, <laughs> I was like, and now Toby is not part of Warner Bros. anymore. So, Samir, if you didn't know who Toby was, I'm telling you now, that's who Toby is. Um, but I'm not going to, unless, as you have a big point, I think I'm going to actually keep it moving and go to the next topic here. And that's the further part of the story. Um, and the part I'm going to ask you is not about Toby, but about DC becoming its own vertical, uh, similar to Marvel Studios. In your opinion, is that the right move for DC? Like, there should be its own thing, own film boss. I want to say they are looking for a new DC chief which means Walter Hamada's days as leader might be coming to an end. He'll probably still have a role. I don't think he's be completely let go, but I think someone he'll be answering to someone new in the future. So how do you feel about potentially them hire, hiring a Feige-like figure to lead DC going forward? I think it's definitely a good concept, but then you be, only because we've seen the last few years of DC, and if you take all like the quote-unquote Elseworld-type movies, which are Joker or the Batman, which exists in its own separate circle, little bubble. Aside from those, if you look at the content, the current main line of DCU movies, it's been hit and miss, hit and miss. More misses than hits, obviously, but it's been just pretty much a train wreck if you really look at the totality of it since, um, since really Snyder's departure. If we're being honest, I know people like don't bring up Oh, you're looking at the past again, sound movies, stuff like that. But if we think about it, there was a clear lack of vision then once his departure happened, and it really reflected on the movies. I know some of the movies back then is close to like the first Wonder Woman or Aquaman, even they did were able to capture some of like what made DC great back then. But since then, some of these movies have been pretty terrible. You look at Wonder Woman 84, you look at the Suicide Squad, they've been pretty horrible movies, and it's pretty sad to see these DC characters um, be done so poorly. And though in theory, you think that, okay, having a central figure at the top, like a Feige figure to really um, control what comes out in the productions um, is smart. You're also on the other hand, scared that, okay, MCU movies as good as they are, or are they, as they can be a lot of times they feel like assembly line films or just um, run on the mill films that keep re-releasing over and over again without anything really unique that they bring to the table. And that's also what you don't want from DC. So that's also a big fear. But I think what sets DC apart is that though they'll have somebody at the top um, to oversee these things, they should continue to keep separate entities and separate projects like the Batman, like Joker, where directors or creatives can really explore things outside of being barred down by any, restraints of trying to fit into a larger picture or universe let me unmute myself uh and that kind of leads me to the the next point um and <clears throat> and that's uh that same report from the Hollywood reporter where david zaslav asked todd phillips to do more in the dc universe and potentially act as an advisor and on that note phillips is also getting pretty close according to reports on a joker sequel and samir that's where i kind of want to rope you to the conversation uh what do you think about Todd Phillips being the guy who advises DC going forward. A lot of people are debating about this on social media. Some feel like it's a good move. Some people feel like it's a horrible move. Todd Phillips has admitted a few times that he actually doesn't read the comics. He doesn't really understand comics that well, but he just knew what to do with Joker in particular. So do you think he's the right voice to be an advisor for David Zaslav on what they should do with DC? I think that, I think because he, he doesn't know much of the comics, I think it's, it's risky. Um, but they definitely needed somebody need to take over i mean the slate right now it was it was pretty much like a bunch of random stuff is coming out there's no there's no clear vision um but uh todd phillips as long as as long as he follows through on the joker sequel i think uh i think i think they should just they should stick with him doing working on that universe and not like the complete dcu because he he's just not he's not as involved in the comics and and, and whatnot i think they need i think they need like a better figure and Umar, I don't know if you're still on camera. I don't know if you're off, but I wanted to get your opinion here. on. Yeah, why aren't you on camera then? We're done with the Ben Kenobi. It's done. The joke is played. 
<laughs> uh, I cannot just get. I can't get on camera. Oh I'm my god! Gonna be on camera soon, but ask your question. You love you love being Ben Kenobi, don't you? Um, yes, I do. Hello, my question yeah. was on. My question was on Todd Phillips as well, and um, and what do you think about the same question? Do you think Todd Phillips is the right person to lead? But also, second question for you: uh, the idea of a Joker sequel. We've discussed it many times, but do you think that that's also a good idea that you know, they should be making a Joker sequel? Well, the thing is that we've talked about this before with the Joker sequel, and I think that like um, the Joker is such a perfect um, movie that you have. Um, I guess like you have two camps. You have one camp that will say that. Um, it was so perfect that you should just leave it alone. And I totally understand that uh, as well. But I do think that it could be unique in the sense that if it really, if if the story is really different than what they did in the first one, and they find a way to kind of uh, disconnect almost from the first movie, I do think that they should try. It all depends on what that story looks like. Um, and then secondly, with Todd Phillips, um, helming i guess the black dc label uh some of the ideas that we've thrown around before about like a like a lex luthor uh movie where superman silhouette i know Shras talked about this before on the stream that would be kind of cool there is so many um different ideas that could come into play um and i do think that is something very unique to dc like it would be a unique thing that dc does and i do think that they should play into that because um to be honest they're not on the level of Marvel. Marvel. Like the thing is, when you come out of Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness, and then you, I don't know, go watch Birds of Prey or something, it's not the same, and it's never gonna be the same. You're always gonna be playing catch up in that realm. So I think you can continue that. I'm not saying don't continue that, but I'm saying that like, you should kind of, I guess, um, dig into like kind of what would make your characters unique and your stories unique. And I think Todd Phillips. Uh, is the right guy for that, especially with what he did with the Joker. Yeah, so um, I'll get to John. I'll ask you in a second what I what I what your thing thoughts are. But I want to jump in with mine. Uh, I think so. Asking Todd Phillips to do more in the DC universe is one thing. I think acting as advisor is another. I'm kind of wondering, like building a universe, building a franchise. Phillips can make a great movie. I think he's a good director. Now, can he build a universe? I don't know. Now, I don't know if they need his help. Like Umar said, is it do they need his help for? The universe is his help for just creating these one-off, really powerful films. The Batman's not a one-off, but it's obviously disconnected from the universe. There's Joker, which is getting a sequel. Then you have potentially actually, under these. Go ahead. I actually yeah. want to interrupt you, but I think that like, um, and and this is not really because of like the Snyderverse or anything, but I actually think that like definitely, um, it goes without saying that like if they if it's about universe like uh world building and universe building then i do think that they should reach out to whether or not he whether or not zach Snyder would ever come back is a different story but i do think that that is a better route than todd phillips only because he he already he already set up like so much i mean i think he would do a better job honestly because um i think with uh with the first two movies that he made yeah they were a bit more like um polarizing but if you look at Zack Snyder Justice League, it was good across the board. Everyone pretty much loved it. People want to see that story continue. And I do think that he would be a good person to 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 just go back to because half the work's already done. I don't think Todd Phillips I think Todd Phillips should be used in the in the sense that like the specific the black label uh films and the films maybe surrounding even just creating like a villain universe, right? Where um is very different and unique and and you have these different villains you go through a character study of each of them and then maybe maybe in the future you could build put them all together like what they did with the avengers except you do it for these villains you could do unique things in that realm i don't think he's the it's not that he's not the right guy i just feel like um it just would make more sense to go to someone else that's already been there it's already doing the work and the fans already want him back so i think that's actually much much better in my opinion. Yeah, and we haven't we haven't actually had um uh last few weeks we haven't actually talked too much about like the uh 
uh, kind of implications of Zack Snyder kind of coming back or what that might look like. I personally think it's still chances are low for something like that happening only because he's kind of really gung-ho about what's going on at Netflix and building out those universes with Rebel Moon and Army of the Dead and so forth. But obviously the fans have been asking for him to come back. So that is something that if they look at maybe David Zazel will be interested in. But so far, we haven't got an indication from David that he's interested in, in that front, but you never know, like as we keep going forward. But <clears throat> what we do know is what's in the reports. And for now, the reports are with Todd Phillips um <clears throat> so with that end it's like Zian, I mean like what do you think about the idea of him being an advisor going forward uh and, and then thoughts of a, I don't know Joker secretly talked a lot about so if you want to more talk about the advisor part that's up to you but like th- like what are your thoughts on the general idea of Todd Phillips being more involved going forward I don't think it's a bad idea and though like you brought up and Samir pointed to as well that he might not have the knowledge of the comic background I don't think that's the reason they brought him in Because he's just an advisor, I think it's more that they looked at what he did with Joker where on such a low budget, and obviously there's no CGI elements, it's not the type of movie, so it plays into a while's low budget, but still, even with the budget they were against, they released such a high-quality movie, just narratively, everything, the cinematography, the score, on every aspect of filmmaking, it was an amazingly well-crafted movie. And so when you when the DC new DC brass looks at that, they're thinking okay, this is the guy because you look at everybody else who could have been in that position, like Patty Jenkins or James Gunn. They could have been head advisors for DC, but you look at their recent projects and like big budget films done very poorly or received poorly. I'm glad they did not choose them. So uh, on this, just the level that you know, maybe he won't have the comic knowledge, maybe he won't have that, but he can advise on quality control where somebody else obviously the people involved with the film they'll be involved they'll be directly handling the narrative and the stories and the characters but then he can advise that okay overall this story is narratively cohesive or is visually appealing or it like plays to certain emotions and has like actual meaning to the film rather than just being um a saturday morning cartoon film i know people like throw that around but that is the thing and you want to have a quality slightly higher than that, especially if DC wants to just really be their own thing and kind of um, do something special with their films going forward. So I think in that regard, with what Todd Phillips has done with Joker, um, he'd be good to advise on what would be a good move to make in terms of the films, in terms of the quality um, of how the film should be, and then let the people in charge of the film themselves, they'll handle the story, they'll handle the characters. That won't be his responsibility so i don't think i think it's a pretty good move for dc and i think that should help and i disagree with umar's point that he should just be handling black label and stuff like that or just villains because yeah obviously joker is a villain movie but just the craft that goes into joker that can be applied to any film really so him being involved just advising on that front i think is smart yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on board with all those points, and I mean, there's more DC news than just that, and that's why I want to keep moving to the next point. This might interest the Superman fans in the table, which I don't know if it's just me or me and Umar, I don't know. But uh, so this is another report from the wrap. Topics? We are switching topics, yeah. Okay, yeah. Before that, I just want to make a clarification on a previous stream. Um, I mentioned something about we were talking about Thor, and I mentioned something about. Um, that it would have been better to see him um, in Infinity War. Like, uh, it would have been better to see him, instead of, like, the fat Thor that we got, it would have been better to see him, like... uh, I mentioned the words drinking and, like, just being... Just, like, being in his sorrows or whatever. I just want to make something very, like, clear because I had a few people that are on the stream that are my friends reach out to me. Uh, I just want to make one thing very clear. I obviously don't support, like like uh a character of that nature like drinking or whatever obviously i'm not like for that it's a fake uh character or whatever uh i feel like because it's something i just want to go over really quickly because um with muslims what happens sometimes is that they think that if you're talking about a movie uh that basically uh if you're talking about something that is considered sinful in our religion Um, and you uh, basically endorse it in another realm, this is something that can bring a lot of issues. So I just want to make sure that, like, I was clear on that front that I obviously don't endorse, like, 
drinking of any like drinking alcohol or any of that stuff and i i and, and obviously that you could show a uh, thor in a in a in a way where if he's in his sorrows that he could just be kind of like, 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 like. Right. well so, i guess i guess i guess the haram please just whacked you across the head um somewhere along the way <laughs> what are you talking about all right thanks thanks for the clarification bro, right? nobody said you're endorsing anything we're talking about a fake character in the movie <laughs> Bro, yeah, whoever's, but, talk, whoever's no, talking feel, to you is wrong in this. No, no, you don't have to address anything. You don't have to address anything. Stand and no, we can stand our own four feet on four feet. We're actually uh, eight feet. Or even nobody feet thinks, or obviously, yeah, nobody, first of all, we know Shraz you're not for it. We know what you Shraz, said. Shraz like Stephen A. He says things that are just like, I'm saying that, we're, I'm saying that we can. say it more simply, guy. No, no, no. I get it. You had made God. clarification, but I'm saying on top of that, I'm like. We're hey, saying the clarification didn't need to be made. No, I'm saying that I, like, I. Think we don't need to make clarification we can stand in our own words like we are who we are and if anyone has a problem with that they can kick rocks but it, it's it just is what it is you know like we no not many clarifications are needed in my opinion if there's people who are saying that this is wrong this is wrong then i feel like like we're missing the point everyone knows your intention when you came in like i didn't yeah no i'm saying more so i'm saying more so like from a story standpoint you could have uh you could definitely easily <laughs> okay. uh, if i was behind, big, yeah I'm but sorry? but that's not what that conversation was about. We were actually talking about, if anything, we we're talking about a much bigger thing about like, is it even right to like say that someone being overweight is a bad thing in, in a movie? Like if they want to do that, but I think the, the drinking, that's like, I think that's implied. I don't know. But nice yeah, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying, I'm to be honest, I'm for the other, this is a good debate, but I'm for the other side in the sense that definitely there can be something said about these characters um and how you kind of go about like portraying them on on a, on a screen that children will see like these are people uh, these are characters that children look up to now it's a different topic obviously when it comes to like who's behind the camera and what decisions they make um in that regard and you can give different takes i mean i, I the joker is a movie about a serial killer so he's like it's like he's in a specific realm so i totally understand where the other side would may also come from but I just want to make the point that as a Muslim, obviously, none of us would support anything that's anything that's sinful. It doesn't have to be drinking. It could be anything, killing even. But the thing is that uh, I guess Shraz makes a good point in the sense that, like, definitely. I'm saying if you're going to make this point, then I guess, the then I guess, then I guess, then I guess every time we talk about Batman killing, every time we talk about anything, to be like, oh, remember, we're not doing anything. That's not our place. That's not our point. That's not our platform. So yeah. I actually disagree. I disagree with you even making the use of your platform right now with that. Like I gotta say, I got I disagree with the whole that this whole thing. That's just my point. Yeah, because uh, we're like Shraz said, we're talking about fake characters. We see them like you talk about Joker, he's a serial killer. We say we like the movie, doesn't mean oh now we start killing people. That's not how it works. And people know we're Muslims, people know what we stand for. You don't have to clarify yourself saying that, oh, you don't support this is that you know who you are, we know who you are, and everybody knows who you are. So it's fine. Just because and if anything, the movie Endgame showed that the drinking and the lifestyle made him to be not a hero and to make him slouch and stuff like that. So it's a negative thing. So, and you said you didn't like that thought. So why would that be? Why would people misconstrue that as you supporting his lifestyle? You know, you didn't need to do that. Right. Yeah. So either way, but hey, he, he brought it's open debate forum. So he brought his point on. So if you have any point to make, make it now. But uh, I, uh, I really have problem with clarification. It is pretty random. It's pretty, pretty out of nowhere. Oh, it's fine. Uh, Boo is allowed to make his clarifications on the forum of, of, of that is us for you know. Um, uh, but yeah, so next the next topic was actually on the DC point, uh, and that was that W Discovery um, should um, um, okay. So yeah, so DC Insiders. This is not David Zaslav. This is DC insider talking to the rap just to make sure we have all our clarifications straight so it's not i'm not saying that david zaslav or his team is saying this but a dc insider speaking to the rap said that w discovery could and they think potentially discussing canceling all the superman projects currently in the works and start again with henry cavill which is a pretty surprising thing to hear especially um uh, considering that the last few months, if not the last few years, any talk about Henry Cavill did not come from official sources, and it really was if he shows up to cameo. Now we're hearing maybe, just maybe, he could come back in as his own movie again. So that's big, and the biggest part being the idea of canceling all the Superman projects in development. Meaning there's two in development right now: one with Tanahasi Coates, um, and the other one with Michael B. Jordan. One is the Val Zod series. One is the 
um, Val's Out series for HBO Max, and the other one is a Superman movie, which potentially will have a black actor playing Superman. Both those things apparently are on the on the banner to get canceled, according to this DC insider. Again, not uh, Zaslav. Uh, and I, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on this one. Um, I don't know if maybe uh, I, don't, I don't know who, who, who I want to go to first. Zian, do you want to go? Like, what do you, uh, what do you think about the idea of that happening? You know, I, I think it's unfortunate for the things in development currently because you want to see the Vazal character, you want to see what Thomas Coates is doing with his Superman as well, and um, which Calvin Ellis, I think, right? So it's, I think there's an echo. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess. The, the big question was for some years that what is even going on with Superman? It's up in the air because there's so many varying reports. There's so many different things of like, who is a main mainline film Superman? And um, it's unclear because Superman is such a huge character. And one of the big um, points of debate and contention were that, oh, the new Justice League post Flash will not have Superman or Batman, which um, is obviously a huge debating point for fans because they are the two main characters and you can have any replacement you want of them that can take the mantle of super the super character and the bat character in the league but if it's not clark and superman or bruce wayne batman like it is not the same thing and um those are just the iconic versions of the characters that's just reality so i think having a reshift of focus towards superman really bringing him back and putting more focus on him again is good for the studio instead of whatever they were doing right before Discovery where they were shelving him and they had very big confusion of what to do with him. I think it's unfortunate. I hope they don't actually cancel the things in production. At least push him to HBO Max or do an Elseworlds story. We've seen they're doing right now. Batman, a separate Batman is happening with Robert Pattinson and that was amazing. You can have a separate Superman, um, a separate Superman properties that are HBO Max or even theatrical that have nothing to do with the mainline films. And then you bring back Henry Cavill for the actual DCEU proper, um, where he re remains Superman, whether they change the story or whatever, um, that's up in the air. But I think just having it back, because he did play the part very well, as he looked the part very well, um, and having him back in that regard would be a very good move. But I hope they don't actually cancel, shelve these other projects either. I think they should, they deserve to see the light of day. And you have HBO Max for a reason, or you have... A separate entity. You have Joker, you have the Batman. These can fit in also a separate bubble as well without affecting or having any issues, causing issues to Henry Cavill returning as the main Superman. Yeah, um, uh, so I'm going to get some comments in from the from the crowd. Uh, our boy Alec, of course, uh, he's saying if WB Discovery is eyeing Superman again, uh, Cavill and Superman, reportedly there might be some interest in the Snyder's continuation. I think it's more likely that Zach will be a producer than director. I do think if Henry Cavill comes back, you have to have obviously Zach as producer because he did create that version of the character. Um, and, you know, uh, so so the main, a lot of people looking at the start again comment, so that might be a troll, totally new contract. We have a why, what do you must start again? That's the confusion here. I, I When I read what this report from the rap, the first idea that came to mind was, my mind was soft reboot, um, which means like they're just going to do a Superman movie with Henry Cavill and they don't talk about BVS and they don't talk about Man of Steel, but they kind of keep it in its own world. The reason that that is an alternate theory to that is because if they want to really disconnect from everything, why would they bring back Michael Shannon as Zod for, for The Flash? So I think the minimum Man of Steel might still be very important, but maybe they'll disregard everything else. Um, it's, it's confusing, but... Um, I like what Alex is saying here. Like, you know, I think the Val Zod project should stay. And I think it's a smart move to get the character off ground. I do like that. I think the Michael B. Jordan Val Zod project is good. And I love ta -Nehisi Coates as a writer. Uh, that Superman project has almost been two years with no updates. So I don't know where they're on the scripting phase. But it would be very uh, interesting to happen. Uh, Fatima is saying, uh, imagine making a no Way homestyle movie called Superman. I think that'd be interesting. But with no, unfortunately, with no Christian Reeve, I think it'd be very tough to, like, do... Like that kind of like serve it fully justice, and someone saying we need to soft reboot Superman. So yeah, this is obviously Superman automatically inspires lots of debate, and it's going to be a continued debate for us for also. Isn't the um, Flash technically already the soft reboot? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, they're already messing soft, with things. They're going to soft reboot. Oh yeah, and wasn't there Flash test screening where they said it was amazingly positive? Yeah, I heard that too. So I don't, I don't know how how that's gonna. Uh, work, you know, and and this is see, I'll say the animated version. Now, here's the thing: I did hear rumor that they're working on an animated Crisis, where where the main DC AU is going to be part of it. That's true. That's wild. 
But that's a whole other thing. Uh, other Superman, I guess, like Tom Welling and uh, Brandon Routh. Samir loves Brandon Routh Superman, and so does Umar, but that's beyond beyond the point. Uh, but hey, bro. hey, um, Brandon. Umar forgot to put his phone down before he turned off the camera. Uh, this oh, is yeah, Umar, <laughs> but I, I I Umar I what do you think about like the it. Superman? What do you think of the idea of that maybe, just maybe, there's a glimmer of hope? Or do you think this glimmer of hope is really a, a red herring, not red herring, a false false alarm, and there is no Super Henry Cavill, but they're saying, hey, cancel the Superman project, let's go do a Superman Henry Cavill soft reboot. That would be, I mean, it's fine, but at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I mean, what does that entail exactly? Is that Man of Steel 2 in between Man of Steel and Batman Superman? Is that, what are we talking Are you talking about retconning certain parts? Are you talking about, like, the Flash destroying everything, and then he's gonna have a whole new Superman 1 again? Like, what are we talking about here? Also, that's the problem with his Superman, and that's why I feel like the previous group of people that were trying to handle that character weren't exactly trying to not use him at all. I think it was a case that you it was hard to place him somewhere. It's a very hard placement because you're doing a movie. I mean, the next event film was going to be The Flash. The Flash has Zod, Fiora, and like uh, Supergirl, and like Grant Gustin's Flash is also in it. So it's like, it's just weird. Like, are you going to place him at the end? What's he going to say? Uh, what What's what's the story you're going to look like? Also, isn't he, rewrite, isn't he rewriting the whole first two movies? So I don't know. It's just dumb. I think uh, the only, the only, which is, I guess, I guess the Snyder, fan, the Snyder Cup fans will be happier. The Snyderverse fans will be happy. But the only place that actually makes sense to, to, to put him is just have him continue on his story from there. If you were to get those guys to come back and do their thing. That's the only place where it feels like he would could just pick up right right from where he left off, and it doesn't impact any universe, doesn't impact anything. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants he wants his solo, and he wants like to save the kittens off trees type Superman movie, which would be fine. But again, I don't know how many people are gonna actually like that. I think that would bomb too at the box office. I don't think that's something that we've already seen that. We've already seen Chris Reeves do that. So I don't know. We can't hear you. Sorry, yeah, there's a lot of noise in the background, so just forgive me if there's interference. Uh, the, uh, my overall point is that I want Superman, obviously, back on screen as quickly as possible. And at this point, I'm good with any actor as long as Superman can be on screen. He, I think he needs to be on film. He needs the kind of treatment that that Batman just got with Matt Reeves' version. Uh, I, and and I'm, that's coming from someone who loves Man of Steel, loves BVS, loves Zack Snyder Justice League. But it's been, it's been 10 years since there's been a Superman solo movie. It's time for another one. At this point, if Henry Cavill can't figure out the contract situation, they have to move forward with someone. We need a Superman movie on screen sooner rather than later. So I'm firmly of that notion, of that belief. Uh, but if Henry Cavill, they can all get their act together, I'm down for him coming back. I would love to see a Superman movie with him. Like you mentioned, he has his own ideas of what he wants a Superman movie to be. It might actually be exactly what DC wants it to be. But I also make the other point that if David Zaslav's best friend and closest advisor is Todd Phillips, then the type of Superman movie he's interested in might not just might not be the very flowery Superman that I think a lot of the audience wants. I think you might just get another gritty Superman movie. So I don't know exactly what we're thinking. I would love maybe a period piece Superman movie from like the 1940s, like too crazy. Like I don't know, like too crazy. By the way, um, last topic <clears throat> before we wrap up. Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, obviously, we're at episode three right now. It was a big episode. Spoilers ahead. I'm sure it's been out for like what five days. So who cares if the spoilers? But uh, uh, this was the big first meeting between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader since the moment where Obi-Wan cut his legs off and his arm off and all the other things. So um, uh, so we, we're going to talk about how this episode did, if it met our expectations, and what we expect for the show going forward. Umar, you are our resident Obi-Wan Kenobi fan, so I'm going to start with you. Uh, do you think the show is living up to your expectations? Uh, and what's, what was your favorite part of this episode that just came out? Well, for me personally, the show is living up to expectations. Um, Obviously, there's sometimes you put on a critic hat and sometimes you put on your fan hat. Um, and I guess with Obi Wan, um, I'm wearing my fan hat for most of it. Like every little thing that's happening um, makes me feel like a kid, and I feel like so. So I'm obviously a biased person when I come and say that. Oh, you know, the show is amazing and everything is great. Obviously, if I was to put on my critic hat. Uh, the first two episodes, which I mean, I think we all saw coming. The first two episodes were always going to be like very slow and just relaxed and stuff. But I still feel like they peppered in throughout. Like, I mean, we saw Anakin at the end of the second episode, like literally. So 
um, and the the setup is fine. I mean, it, the only parts I feel like uh, were a bit slow were the layer parts, uh, the parts that me and Samir kind of agree on. Um, but I think in the third episode, uh, the series took it to a different level, and there's obviously many different scenes one can talk about. I think uh, Vader coming down into that village. I think that scene alone, uh, just the way he kind of like killed people and just this the whole vibe around him um and obi-wan like watching his his apprentice i mean he saw him kill younglings but to see what he's become now um and the evil that is there i feel like um that scene alone speaks to kind of like uh, how menacing darth vader can be uh and i feel like that's actually more menacing than we've ever seen like in terms of like the full gambit that's that's a different level of like uh, the way they shot it to the way the uh the way he's kind of sensing where obi-wan is all that is amazing obviously there's uh when they meet and they fight and all that's great too but uh for me i think it's just that scene uh with vader coming back and just killing people and just evil that seems crazy and for you is this show living up to your expectations uh what are you thinking about the show so far um and where do you think it's gonna go we're only about halfway done so there's still three more episodes so there's still things to do I think it's living up to expectations, but you know, the ex thing about expectations is that we came in with very, very high expectations. So I think though this episode really ramped it up in terms of like, all right, you're getting the story going, things are in motion. If you look at the first three episodes totality, it has been kind of slow. I like, kind of like a slow burn. It hasn't been slow really, but you get bits and pieces that oh yeah, this is a sick moment, this is a cool moment, but overall it's been kind of slow. But I think it's because it's filmed almost like a movie where it's not episodic or, oh, yeah, big cliffhanger, a big moment, you know? It's like a movie, so he's got to see the whole thing in totality to really um, appreciate all of it at once. And I think episode three was like, I hope that wasn't the really big climax of the Obi-Wan movie that we're getting basically right now. And um, I hope they don't just, like, slow down and be two next two episodes be, like, uh, almost nothing happening. Because then that would feel like a letdown. I think they really kicked into high gear with this episode. And now you have to really keep that high going forward and then have that slow slope back down to reality by the time it ends. Um, and I think that would make it a very well-rounded show. But I think if this was the peak, <clears throat> then that would be disappointing. Samir, so same question to you. Um, is it meeting up to your expectations? And kind of where do you think it's going to go forward from there? It is mostly leading up to, to the expectations, but I agree with Jan. I, I hope that this wasn't the rematch of the century that they were hyping up from the beginning. Um, and some of the scenes, some of like the transitions or like the the in between scenes uh, are so bad. This whole show, like uh, the quality is bad, or or this just the writing is bad because we've seen the first episode and the second second episode where Leia was running and it was shot really badly, and like they had to run into trees or whatever just to just to make the story go along. And in the second episode, there was that weird rooftop scene where he's shooting, but it's like shot really badly and it's like not not believable. And in this episode, when the fight ends on like the worst note ever, where the droid comes and just picks up Obi Wan or something and just walks away, like there there are some story issues. But other than that, I think I think the show has been really good so far, and um, I think I think the layout scenes for this episode weren't as bad as they were for the first two episodes. Um, so I think. Um, as the show goes on, when they continue the that Leia the little Leia arc, um, uh, I think it'll be better, and I, I hope they uh, I hope they go crazy with it instead of whatever they've been doing. So I'm 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 closer to the mindset of Samir, and again, there's a lot of background as a parade going outside. So, uh, but uh, my opinion is that the episode three this was the best episode so far. I think the best moment for me is really encapsulated encapsulated when Darth Vader wanted Obi Wan to suffer, and he just dragged him through the fire to make him feel just one percent of the pain that he felt through obi-wan's hands and i was making this point to you guys on the on on our calls every single that night and i say that i feel like Ob uh, anakin he yearns for his children's attention in the next movie he tries to connect with luke even if it means bringing luke to the dark side but i think he never really forgives obi-wan and even in episode six where he's like somewhat thinking that hey is my son right is it wrong to be in the dark side? He's considering his options and he hates Palpatine. But I think he never forgives Obi-Wan. I think, remember, his last moment seeing Obi-Wan before he turned to Vader was thinking that Obi-Wan is the one who turned Padme against him. He thought the one person he could never lose his trust is Padme's trust. And he blames Obi-Wan for that. Then he blames Obi-Wan for obviously 
um, Peter putting him in pain for the rest of his life, even though uh, Palpatine pur purposely made his suit more painful to make his anger go higher. But Palpatine's just a crazy guy. But the, but he blames Obi Wan for all these different things. So I feel like the hate he feels for Obi Wan when he said "I hate you" in the end, it was a real "I hate you," and it does not go away. So when he drags him through the fire, there's no like, "Oh, I feel bad for you. You're my former master." It's no, I hate you, and I want to torture you. I don't want to kill you. I want to torture you because if you want, you could just snap Obi Wan's neck the way he snapped everyone else's neck. He was planning to torture the guy, and that's why I feel like from a subtext perspective it's a really well written thing but one but then i on the other side is that subtext purposefully made better from the writing or was the subtext always there and that's very minimal work for us to see it and and i feel like sometimes it feels like they're doing minimal work um rather than going all the way um but i agree with you like alex like darth vader never misses like every time he shows up it's great and i agree with samir every time that vader or obi-wan are not on the screen the show suffers um he says, you know, Alec also adds, I think Obi-Wan's going decently, but the Leia story is kind of going long for me. Not that she's a good character, but it's dragging. Uh, and Fatima makes the other perspective. She says, I don't know what everyone was expecting. It's not supposed to be another crazy action-filled thing. It's supposed to showcase how he was between three and four. So, and Alec goes back and we have a debate, debate going. He says, I think people had expectations of episode three, part two. And he admits he's not the biggest Star Wars guy, but I want a more Obi-Wan haunting him from his past. And we only have three episodes left. And I'm actually... Uh, I believe in, I see both sides of that. And I'd want definitely better writing from the show. I think there is always room for more better writing. But uh, I'm also, I also like it so far. I'm very excited. As for Zal, I don't think this is the final, like this is the real last like fight between them. I think they're going to fight one more time. But I'm excited to see how the show goes. Also, I, I think it is worth keeping expectations in check. I don't think Darth Vader is going to show up the next episode. I think they're going to come back down to earth a little bit. And then they'll ramp back up for the final. But yeah, that's my overall point. And then last thing. Always worth ending on a joke, on, 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 a, on a question, on a food question. So I have another one for you guys this time around. And it's uh, one got to go. Let me move this banner so you guys can see it better. Uh, you guys have to let go of either cupcakes, candy, ice cream, pizza, cake, or cookies. So one thing has to say goodbye forever. Um, what is that thing? I leave it up to you guys to decide. Uh, so what's the worst thing on this screen? So who wants to go first? Uh, nothing is bad, but... If I had a choice that I had to give one, it'd be cake. Cake is an easy choice for me. Like this, cakes I can live without cakes. A cupcakes, in my opinion, are better than cakes themselves. So if I have cupcakes, I don't need cakes. I don't like cupcakes that much, but I, but I. So I, my choice would have been cupcakes. Uh, candy also. Candy is a very strange word because candy is that chocolate? Is it chocolate like, is it, or is it like? Is it all candy. the chocolates? And well, from the picture, you can see it's a mix of. It encompasses everything. You know? Yeah, it's a it's a one it's a catch all for everything. It's a catch all, and then ice cream is my favorite, so that that can't go. Cookies, uh, pizza, pizza feels weird. But that's the only thing that's a savory food here. Everything else is uh, uh, sweet, but um, I don't know. So, yeah, right, wait, wait. It should be switched. The question is switched. Just pick one, and everything else has been given up. What's the one thing you have to keep from the list? You know, that's a harder decision to make. All right, so let's let's first let's see what the negatives are. So we got a uh, cupcakes for to go. Fatima, you say ice cream go or stay? Because if it's go, I'm very sad. Uh, and then <laughs> Saf saying cake to go, right? So we started. This yeah, is all the go gotta, questions. Gotta, they got to say go or stay. All right. So I let's read, we're redoing the, the question. Even though, it, even though it says one got to go, we're saying one got to stay. So only one can stay. The rest you got to give up for life. What's staying? That's the new question. So don't <laughs> ignore the one got to go. It's one got to stay. Pizza. <laughs> Pizza stays, so you'd give up all sweets for even, pizza. And it's not even close for me. Nothing else on there is the same. But I'm a savory guy, so it's different. Uh, okay, so you're saying, I kid, I kid. So ice cream stays forever. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have a lot of confusion for ice cream. Uh, our boy Robotic Uzi is saying uh, candy or ice cream got to go. So that's what Guz is saying. And then and candy um, does got to go. It's, for me, that's and, obvious too. And, and then Saf uh, is saying cake. You know, so Oh, he's saying cookie got to stay. And he's saying, put that thing back up, no cap. So <laughs> thanks for ordering me to put the screen back up. All right. Uh, so one got to stay. So, Zan, which got to stay for you? It's a very hard decision because it, the pizza, it doesn't fit in the, 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 the categories of all these desserts and the edge of pizza right there. Um, and that's what made the decision harder. But I think I'd have to pick candy. I keep candy. M&M's, Hershey's, like, 
I can give a pizza and I'll keep that forever. Hmm. Samir, one gotta stay. I haven't, I haven't made him. I haven't you still think? Well, I'll think. So for me, if the only gotta stay, I gotta say ice cream, unfortunately, because I'm a big ice cream guy. Um, but I don't know. Like, I'm an ice cream guy on this one. I like all of them. I don't like cupcakes. So for me, the one gotta go is easy because I think cupcakes are the worst of the group. Uh, but Samir, I thought for you, one gotta go is pizza, right? Probably, yeah. It's either pizza or candy. But so then what, what's, got, what's gotta stay? What's gotta stay? I have no idea. Man. Simmer, you have to keep in mind, Swiss rolls count as candy. That's a candy product. Yeah, that's fine though. I can just have cake then. Because it's that's like it. Yeah. time to throw a curveball. Yeah. Hi guys. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what you can't have food debates without me being like super annoying. Is it Fatima? Is it what what's gotta go? Uh cookies. And that's really hard. Actually, no, cupcakes, because I like cookies and I like cakes, but cupcakes can go because you can make multiple types of flavors for cakes and cookies, but cupcakes are, are a bit like a mini version of a cake, I guess. Even, has, even the picture of the cupcake in this looks better than the cake. I agree, the cake picture is look looks good. It better, but like with a cake, you can share it out and have everyone join you but with a cupcake it's just gone and and even if you weren't gonna share a cake out you can always go back for another slice for yourself you know yeah but that's why there's always like a tray or like a, a, a large set of cupcakes not just one cupcake for the table uh, i don't know i think i feel like you can do more with a cake than a cupcake i suppose you can fill a cupcake with like jam and cream inside but i don't know it's either cupcake or cake as long as one of them stays because i do like spongy sweetness Saf, is the her in the situation, Fatima? I almost lost all respect for her. <laughs> uh, you almost lost all respect for me. What did I do? Because when you when you said uh, when you said ice cream go is gone, but then you said oh, you said folks straws. Oh we no, lot, no, we have a lot of ice cream fans here. Uh, so one gotta stay, Saf. I mean not Saf, uh, Samir. You didn't make your one gotta stay. What gotta stay? Well, you didn't decide. Stay. You ever seen those? You ever seen those cupcake cakes where it's like a bunch of cupcakes and you just pull them out, but it's like one cake. You know what I'm that, talking? That that doesn't sound good. Not what is that? No, what? You crazy? It's good. What are you talking about? That's it's that like sounds a bunch bad. Of I, I don't even know what you're talking about. If, you gotta look. If it you're up. saying it's a it's like it's a, a bunch layer of, of if it's a layer of cupcakes that you cut up like a cake, that sounds bad. No, no, no. It's like a bunch of cupcakes. Okay, and there's like there's like one <laughs> layer of icing on top of all of them. Like one no, cake. I like get what cake. I know what Samir's talking about. Sometimes it gets into like a letter, right? Yeah, or, or like whatever shape. I don't know. But yeah. Said, what's your point? <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> the point is, you pull out the cupcakes, and it's like cupcakes, but it's cake. You know, that's just a slice of cake. But well, how does that add? How does that add no, to the question? <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying, what does that even count as? Then? So instead of asking the question, you thought hard in your brain of how to like beat the question and like go under it. Like, oh, yeah, I found a logical cake. fallacy. Yeah, I choose cake. So cake is the best. Yeah, cake is it. But you just said cakes are cupcakes, so all right. That's what I'm I, saying, I, yo. That's what, that's what well, then that makes it easier. So if cupcakes are by themselves and then cakes are by themselves and one has to go, I'm fine with either of them going as long as I get to keep one of them. Alright, so what if you can only pick one from the list? Pizza. Pizza, Pizza gotta stay. I'm sorry. I love ice cream, but make it two got to stay and it'll be pizza and ice cream. Right, so the rest your can pizza, go. So Umar, you chose pizza, right? To stay because you're a savory guy. I chose ice cream. Zian chose what was your one? I chose candy. Candy because of versatility. Let me show you. Yo, look at this. Look at this. Look, it's a bunch of cupcakes, okay? It's like a cake. Look at it. Uh, and you pull out the cupcakes. You just pulled them out, you know. Ah, uh, okay, okay. What saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if I want to start with the middle cupcake? How, that, how that doesn't. That doesn't. Start I, with the middle cupcake. It doesn't. It doesn't sound good. It, it doesn't, doesn't look, look good. Yeah. It's just a cake. We're just. It's just less. Cake, but it's less cake, cake on the bottom because it's shaped in like circles. Over it's there. too much yeah, icing. Like too much icing pisses me off. Like easier to to distribute. You know, like everyone just picks up a cup. It's a cupcake, but it's like a cake. This this is Lee Boo during right now, just watching. <laughs> 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 that's what you mean. Who's right. You're watching the chaos. Right. So, so, okay, so I'm going to go around them one more time. Pizza for Fatima, pizza for Umar, ice cream for me, candy for Zian, and and some weird cupcake cake combination for Samir. No, no, it's just, cake. Make, it's just cake. Okay. 
like, good enough. And then uh, Alec is saying that the only thing cupcakes are good for is making sandwiches with them. I've never yes. heard of a cupcake yeah, sandwich. No, yes. you, off, you you've never heard stuff. of a cupcake sandwich? No, I'm, I'm from New York. Okay, no, basically, <laughs> you get the cupcake, and then you open the open the cupcake holder, and then you break you break it in half. And then you put the bottom part on top of the icing, and then you've got a nice and a cupcake sandwich. That's true. That's fact. I don't get it. See, it sounds like too much work. And what I like about cupcakes is it's convenience of just pick up and eat. You know, I don't want to the most cutting and like, stuff. See, right? Alec it's gets me. Yeah. Uh, Alec, where are you from again? Like, where, what's your like? What part of America are you in? I don't know. Like, I've never. I mean, I've been in New York my whole life. I never heard of this. This I'll sounds show like a mid. You. This, sounds like a, this sounds a like cupcake. a mid. This sounds like a Midwest thing. <laughs> If you're from the Midwest, then this is this sounds like it. Um, but uh, and you Canadians, you probably, probably Utah. Okay, uh, I get it now. <laughs> um, uh, so I never heard of it, but um, it's something you know, that you do. You don't buy it. Yeah. Last thing. Um, uh, you're about to shake Canadians. The, how are the Lakers doing these playoffs? So I like how me and Umar are both matching. Obviously, I'm wearing my Lakers shirt, and so is he. Um, but yes, Lakers are not in the playoffs. And but wait a minute, you have a Boston, you have the Golden State Warriors logo. They're not doing well either. <laughs> again, yeah, but they're Boston. in the finals. That's the sad part. Yeah, but but Boston's gonna win. And LeBron's watching them at home, just like us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I guess that makes that makes the stream as is now. Uh, we've hit all the topics. So, uh, what do you guys think is? Uh, the future of DC Films under David Zaslav. Do you want Todd Phillips to be an advisor moving forward? Let us know in the comments below and join the debate. From myself, from Zayan, from Umar, from Samir, and from Fatima, we are the Faruqi family right now, and we'll see you next time.